Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will present an algorithm to compute exponentiation. For example, suppose your goal is to find m power e mod n. We will see different variants of this later. There are cases where m is not a number. It could be a polynomial. n is another polynomial. But the same idea can be applied in that context as well. Okay, m power e mod n, how do we compute it um, quickly? It's not the fastest algorithm that I'm going to talk about, but it's relatively good. So let's say e is 11, for example, okay? m is say three. So our goal is to compute three power 11, and let's say n is 15. So one possible sort of naive way is to take three and multiply it 10 times, right? When you multiply it 10 times three, you will get three power 11, right? And then you can divide it by 15 to find the remainder, and then you're done. So we can't use this algorithm to sort of naively compute the exponent. Okay, from a performance standpoint, it's not feasible. Uh, one idea, which is a pretty neat idea, is the notion of square and multiple. So you take the exponent and write it in binary first. So 11, we can write it in binary as follows, right? In base two, this is eight plus two, 10, 10 plus one, 11. This is interesting for us because square and multiply algorithm, what we do, is we take the original message, when I say message, the M, and uh, keep on squaring it, okay? Okay, now we can compute 3 power 11 using this expression as follows. We take uh, 3 power 2 power 0 and we square it. What will we get when you square 3 power 2 power 0? 3 power 2 power 0 into 3 power 2 power 0, which becomes 3 power 2 power 1. So if you, if you pay close attention to this, if you square a term here, you will get the next term, okay? Of course, if you square this, you will get three power two power two, which is not present, okay? So we will not multiply that, otherwise you will compute something else. We will skip that. And the next one is three power two power two square. If you do it, then you'll get three power two power three. So let me show you what it means. If you square, say three power two power two, if you write all the powers, like starting from zero, one and so on, if you square a term, you will get the next left term, okay? That is the squaring part. You keep on squaring it. 3 power 2 power 0, 3 power 2 power 1. Although I didn't use 3 power 2 power 2 here, you will still have to do it, but you will not multiply that particular term because we don't have, you see here, you have a 0 at that particular position. So we, we will ignore that. So that's basically it. Keep on squaring, and then you will multiply only if binary position is turned on in the original exponent e. Okay, so here's my square and multiply algorithm. I have generalized it for, for different groups. So don't worry if you don't know what a group operation is at this point. You can imagine group operation is, in this case, multiplication. So as you can see, I by default, I point it to mod mul, which is just multiplication, right? It takes a and b and multiply it and computes the remainder with, with the n. Um, you can change that later, but at this point, don't worry about this, okay? It's just a regular multiplication and then modulus n. Yeah. E is greater than or equal to zero, just to work only with non-negative numbers. And we initialize the result to be one. Okay, while E is not equal to zero, we continue the loop. So inside the loop, what we do, we check whether the particular bit position is turned on or not, okay? We are coming from right-hand side of the exponent E in terms of binary. If it is set, what we do, we multiply the current TM by the result, okay? As I shown earlier. Um, in each step, we keep on squaring, okay? Group operation in this case is just A times A mod N because you see here M and M means A times A is same as M times M, which is same as M square. So on the whiteboard, I explain the squaring phase is happening here. And why do I do E right shift by one? Uh, we already analyzed the particular bit position of the exponent. So we can throw that out by doing a right shift. And then we can look into the next um, bit position of the exponent. If it is turned on, we will multiply with the current result times the current EM. Otherwise, we keep on squaring. Okay, so it's squaring and multiplying is what's happening in this uh, portion of the code. Okay, there are side channel attacks possible. Okay, if you don't know what a side channel is, not a problem at this point. This extra piece of code that runs only if a particular bit is turned on, which means an attacker will be able to figure out um, by collecting a lot of samples which bits of um, E are actually set. If E is set, turned out to be a secret for some reason, then um, you will have a problem, okay? The bits will be leaked. There are better algorithms that are um, more resistant to side channel attacks, but for our purpose at this point, this is good enough. Select my M to be three, E to be 11, and then uh, my N to be 15. So if you use the regular Python implementation of an exponent algorithm, you will be sending M, E, and N, and you should get an answer. 
whatever 12. Now, if you use our algorithm, right, the square and the multiply algorithm, you get 12. So we get the same answer. Okay, very good. So what I'm going to do is I will generate a random, say, a 2048 number, and the exponent is another 2048 bit number, which is a really large number. Okay, I'll show, I'll print it for you, and the n is another large random number. Okay, if you want to get a feel for it, you see here it's, that's the kind of large number I'm talking about. Okay, anyway, so I have given m, e, and n, and you see here within a fraction of second I got the the square and multiply done for a very large number. We can actually double check whether our algorithm works correctly with the regular Python. Yeah, same. 